we are. So I yeah. had this life. Um, I, I can kind of see my life in a little bit as, of stages, right? So I kind of start off as this behavioral economist, this this marketing and psychology professor. I stumble on the question of what makes things funny. Um, I, I dive into that. I become a bit of a public academic as a result. I, I end up meeting meeting Shane. Um, I find myself on stages more often, writing books, co-writing books, and so on. I launch a podcast called I'm Not Joking that I use to, to help Siege stick to business. Um, there, Shane's a, a, was, um, was a guest on there, obviously. And, um, and so I'm sort of now kind of, if you think about Venn Diagram, I'm sort of in the world of kind of like business and comedy, so to speak. And stick to business, my last book. I think is the epitome of that, right? It's it's a it's um, serious lessons from the masters of comedy. I was planning a sabbatical, I'm planning a leave of absence. I was calling it my mini retirement or my my semi retirement, and I knew that I wanted to set the academic work aside. And I I've known I've really known um, that I I wanted to I wanted the comedy stuff to be a ten year project. It's now approaching 12 or 13 years, but I had always thought of it as like a finite period of time. And, and the idea being that I think my best comedy related ideas are behind me, or at least humor research ideas are behind mm. me. I think there's other people who now will have a fresh perspective. Um, Max Planck said that, that um, the advancement of science happens one funeral at a time. You know, so mm -hmm. it's not it's not the grizzled old veterans who come up with the big breakthroughs. It's sort of it's sort of those mid career folks. And so I was like, well, what am I going to do with this this leave of absence? I knew that I wanted to do some sort of creative work. And at the time, I envisioned it as a book, um, but I ended up launching it as a podcast, in part because I like talking more than I like read, uh, writing. Um, but I had this idea I was going to write a book about turning 50 and about how to turn 50 well, so to speak. It was a loose idea. And then I realized, no, it's not a book about turning 50, it's about being a 50 year old bachelor, right? So how do you, you know, if you've never married, you never had kids and now you're 50, like, what do you do? How do you do this? There is no playbook for the 50 year old who's never been married and never had kids. There is no playbook at all. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh shit, there's no playbook for people who are single in any way. If anything, it looks something like this. If you look for that book, it's either, oh, woe is us, look at how we are stereotyped and discriminated against, and here are the ways. Or it's, you know, Shane, we just gotta fix you up and you can just power through this and we're just gonna make you an appealing prospect and you are going to find the love of your life and you're curing complete. my singleness. That's right. I will cure you. <laughs> right. I will cure you. Neither of those books or ideas resonates with me. First yeah. of all, I'm too positive and optimistic to complain too much about single life because I think it's pretty great. And the second one is I don't want to be fixed so that I can then become part of a package deal you know, where my name and some woman's name gets turned into a nickname like Benefer. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I decided to write that book. And then, as I said, I pivoted into a podcast called Solo, The Single Person's Guide to a Remarkable Life. So it started off as a secret project, a passion project. It's completely different than anything I've ever done. It has a, it has a dose of science in there, of course. Um, and I'm having the time of my life doing it. And of anything I've done, it might be the biggest thing that I end up doing in my life.